Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, if you've seen my videos, you know that my goal is to help you learn and love economics. So really quick, let's talk about the economics of this Corona Cyrus. Yes, you heard me right. I'm using the word Cyrus instead of the other V word because apparently YouTube demonetizes videos that talk about the the thing. Which is actually a good idea because you should be listening to healthcare professionals in the CDC instead of people here on YouTube. Case in point, two weeks ago I made a video talking about this whole thing and how it could cause a global recession. At the end, I gave some bad advice. The worst case scenario is that the virus continues to spread and that containment efforts limit production and international trade, causing a global recession. But if you want to help and prevent that from happening, then go out and buy that new car, go on vacation, and go and start that business. The sooner people feel comfortable going about their lives, the better the health of the economy. Just to be clear, now is not a good time to go buy a car or go on vacation or start that business. In my defense, I didn't know how fast things were gonna change. We went from being in class to being in quarantine, and the rest of the video was actually really good economics. And it is true that eventually, when things get better, we should go back to spending in our regular everyday lives. Regardless, with all the economic uncertainty out there, there's two things that we know for sure. Number one, these are unprecedented times, and number two, this will all be in economics textbooks in the future. So I'm making this video to bridge the gap between the economic concepts you learn in the classroom and in textbooks and the economics that you see right now. Now the first concept you learn in economics is the idea of scarcity. We have unlimited wants, but limited resources. And you've heard a whole lot about this idea of trying to flatten the curve, to avoid this spike in cases. The reason why we're doing this, while we have the quarantines, is because of scarcity. There's only so many doctors and nurses and hospitals and respirators, and if we have too many patients all coming at the same time, there's not enough to go around. Scarcity. So the purpose of the quarantine is really resource allocation, to manage the crisis in such a way that we don't run out of the key resources. Now the second concept that you're gonna see a whole lot is the idea of a shortage. If you've been to a store, you've seen empty shelves for toilet paper and canned goods, and you can tell there's clearly a shortage. The reason this is happening is because there's an increase in demand for these goods and services because people are afraid they're not gonna be able to get it later. But keep in mind, people aren't eating more or going to the bathroom more, so there's really a surplus of these items in people's homes. But the point is, as long as this stuff keeps getting produced at the same rate, then we're gonna be fine. We're not gonna have a huge shortage of goods and services. And since we're talking about supply and demand, let's talk about the airlines, restaurants, and cruise ships. People are just not going out to eat and they're not going on vacation. That's decreasing the demand for these industries. And that's really rough because all the people who work in these industries are also being let go. And this can all be shown on the circular flow model. There's a decrease in the demand in the product market for goods and services. That means there's a decrease in the demand for resources in the resource market. That means workers are gonna be losing their jobs and so they have less money to buy goods and services and it's gonna get worse and worse. This is the whole idea of the multiplier effect. In the United States, consumer spending is about 70% of GDP. And when one person stops their spending, that's another person's income that now falls, and so they decrease their spending, and somebody else decreases their spending, and it happens and brings the whole economy down. This is what I talked about in my other video called a demand shock. The demand has fallen for so many goods and services that's pulling the economy down, leading it to a recession. And remember, a recession is technically two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, or GDP is falling for six months. Economists disagree by how much, but the reality is we definitely are in a recession and it's only gonna get worse in the second quarter. One of the things economists do is they look at a recession and compare it to previous recessions to figure out how things are gonna play out. But this recession, because it was caused by a Cyrus, didn't just happen over time, it happened quickly. It came in like a wrecking ball. I came in like a wrecking ball. And with it's gonna come a lot of unemployment. In fact, the president from the St. Louis Fed predicted there's gonna be 30% unemployment. During the Great Depression, it was 25%. Like I said, these are economically unprecedented times. So what are we gonna do about it? How are we gonna fix the problem? Well, you know there's two ways to address a recession. There's monetary policy and fiscal policy. Monetary policy is when the central bank, the Federal Reserve, tries to increase the money supply and decrease interest rates so people take out more loans and do more spending. The way they do that is three things. They lower the discount rate, lower the reserve requirement, and they buy bonds, and the Fed has already done those. Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve has already decreased the discount rate, the rate that the Federal Reserve charges banks to borrow money 
They've decreased the reserve requirement. Banks do not need to hold money in reserve. And they've already started buying a lot of bonds. And the Fed is doing something called quantitative easing, where they're buying assets from banks so they can lend out more money to customers. And remember, that's one of the goals of the Fed is to make sure banks have enough money to keep them from going under. And that's important because the last time this happened during the Great Recession, the problem was the financial sector. But in this case, the big banks are doing okay. These commercial banks have a lot of excess reserves and they can go borrow money from the Fed at a very low interest rate. So really, we're not really talking about a financial meltdown here. The real problem is a decrease in consumer spending and aggregate demand. And that's when fiscal policy comes in. That's when the government increases spending or cuts taxes. That's the stimulus package that everyone's talking about. They're trying to get money in people's pockets. But keep in mind, they're not doing government purchases. They're not buying roads and bridges and freeways. That stuff takes time. Instead, they're trying to give money to consumers so people go buy what they need. How much that actually is per person, I don't know. But one thing's for sure, when you get your check, go spend it. Don't save that money. The goal is to get money out there, to get spending going. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and I'll make more. I'm also gonna make more videos to help you learn and practice economics for all you who are studying at home. Because like I said, my goal is to help you learn and love economics. Thanks for watching. Until next time.